Okay, so in this video, we will consider an example of a so-called stem and leaf display. And if you look, we have the same problem as in the previous video. We are given a random sample of 25 Canadians, and we were asking about their age. And so we have the exact same 25 ages as in the previous video. And you may ask, okay, first, what is a stem and leaf display? All that is is once again, just like the bar graph, a graphical representation of the raw data. And you may ask, well, why would we need possibly a second way to represent this data graphically? Isn't the bar graph enough? Well, if you look at the bar graph that we've constructed in the previous video, there is something here that is lost. If you ignore the raw data, Look at the first category, people in their teens. All the bar graph tells you is that there are four people from your sample that were in your teens. But the question is, well, how many were exactly 10? How many were 11? How many were 12 or 13 or 13 up to 19? Same thing in, let's say, in the 30s. So the bar graph tells you that people in their 30s, there were six of those in your sample. But what were their exact age? How many were 30? How many were 31? How many were 37? This information here is lost. There is a question now of, well, can we construct a bar graph where none of the raw information is lost? And the answer is yes. And that is exactly what a stem and leaf display is. You will see that it is exactly a bar graph, except that in our frequency bars will also be contained the raw data. So let's see how this works out. There are two parts to a stem and leaf display, clearly. <laughs> As the name implies, there is a stem part and there is a leaf part, just like a tree. So the stem and there's the leaf. Now the idea here is that the column for the stem plays the same role as a column for the age in the previous problem for the distribution table. So this will replace our column for the categories for the ages. And the leaf will essentially capture the frequency, but also the raw data so that nothing is lost. So what we want will be that the length of a given leaf represents the actual frequency of the stem, of the category. So what we need now is a way, if you think of it, to represent each raw data and break it down into in which stem it is in and have one symbol for the leaf for each raw data. Okay, so we'll need here units. So we'll take the stem unit to be 10 and the leaf unit to be 1. Okay, so every number in a stem, if you want to read it, will be multiplied by 10. So instead of thinking of people in their teens and writing 10, we will write 1 as 1 times 10 is 10. Instead of writing 20 for people in their 20s, because this number should be multiplied by 10, so 2 times 10 is 20. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So every number in the stem must be multiplied by 10, as the stem unit is 10. The stem unit is 1, so the numbers here will be multiply by 1, so they'll be exactly what they are. And now, let's construct our rows. So, people in their teens, there were 4 of those, so 11, 12, 13, 13. Well, the first digit, the 10 part, that's captured by the stem, right? The stem unit is 10, 1 times 10 is 10, so we ignore this. And 
and we're now left with each age a single character. One, three, two, three. So we write the symbol one to capture the person that was 11 years old. We write the number two to capture the person that was 12 years old. And the number three twice because there are two people in there with being 13 years old. And so you see, this is a category for people in their teens, and this is the last digit of their age. And so there was one person that was 11, one that was 12, and two that were 13. And because each value is represented by a single character, then the length of your row is the frequency, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's the idea. So let's complete now our stem and leave display. People in their 20s, there were five of those. So 20, 20, 20, so there are three people with exactly in their 20s, so well 20 years old, so 20, 20, 20. Then 25, so that's a 5, and 27. Let's keep going. People in their 30s, there were 6 of those. There you go. So, the smallest is 4, so 34, 34. There's 2 of those. Then it's 38. And three people were 39. One, two, three. So nine, nine, nine. People in their 40s, there were three of those. 42, 43, and 45. So they're all of different ages. So 42, 43, 45. So two, two, two three, five. People in their 50s, there were two of those, 57 and 51, so 1 and 7. People in their 60s, there was only one person in their 60s, 63. People in their 70s, there were three of those, 72, 70, and 78. So we have 0, 2, and 8. People in their 80s, there was no one, so we leave an empty row. And people in their 90s, there was only one, 95. And that is the complete stem and leaf display for the raw data, our 25 values. And if you now think of this, if you turn this on its side, what you have is essentially the bar graph, except none of the raw data is lost, right? Add to this our bar graph. Oops. So look at the bar graph for now. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, your categories. And each bar gives you the frequency for that given age group. 4, 5, 6, 3, 2, 1, 3, 0, 1. Well, look at your stem and leave display, and it's the exact same thing except that the bars are made up of the leaves, and the number of leaves is the frequency. People in their teens, because the unit for the stem is 10, so people in their teens, there were 4 of them, 20s, 5, 30s, 4, uh, 6, sorry, and so forth. And you can say, well, not only are there 6 people in their 30s, but there are two that were 34, one that was 38, and three that were 39. So a stem and leave display is basically just a bar graph where none of the original data is lost. Now, of course, this is limited. If you had a sample of, say, a thousand people, so a thousand different ages, this would be rather a horrible idea, right? The bars would be way too long, and this would be not very functional. So the idea is for a small number of data values, 
a stem and leaf display is better than a bar graph because none of the original data is lost. But when you have a much larger sample, then realistically, you're much better off using a bar graph than a stem and leaf display. And that's it.